Chapter 3 Skylarking Krista was so busy thinking about hexes that she didn't notice a huge spider web strung between the trees and she flew straight into it. Ah! The web was the work of a golden orb weaver, a big yellow and black striped spider. Sometimes you miss what's right under your nose, and that can be dangerous, said the spider. Hmm, very no less. Must be my lucky day. Oh no, cried Krista, <gasps> desperately trying to disentangle herself from the web. I like Fetty, said the spider, creeping menacingly towards her. You stay away from me, Krista warned. Don't you dare eat me. You won't like me anyway. I'm all wings. Are you kidding? I love wings. Nice and crunchy. Well, if you don't let me go, I'll cast a spell and change you into a... a gecko. Poof, said the spider. The only thing you can change, my dear, is your attitude. What are you doing out here? Krista told the spider she was checking out whether or not Hexus really was working the weather. Spin the silk and stretch the webbing, the spider said, its eight eyes almost popping out of its head. And what are you going to do about it? A skinny little thing like you couldn't do much. I'm a fairy, and I could do all sorts of magic things, said Krista hoping she sounded convincing. But the spider didn't believe her and asked Krista to prove she was magic. So Krista closed her eyes, held out her arms and concentrated. The flash of red that suddenly appeared next to the web surprised her almost as much as the spider. Pips, she cried, as an elfin-faced boy unfolded his amber wings and hovered in the air beside her, grinning. I've been following you, he said, and I must say you've been flying like an old mothball. Fancy flying into the oldest trap in the world, fly face. Luckily I was watching out for you. I could have managed on my own. That's a load of turkey mold and you know it. He laughed and helped her out of the web. Uh, uh. Hello, Pips, said the spider. Pity you turned up. I was having fun. Fun? spluttered Krista. It may be your idea of fun, but you were about to eat me. Nah, replied the spider. I never eat fatty. No taste. Then why did you have to frighten me to death? You were so busy jumping to conclusions, I didn't have to say much. But take my advice, Krista, and practice up on your magic. You could need it. Remember, your boyfriend may not be around to help you next time. He's not my boyfriend! Krista blushed, then laughed as she waved goodbye. <laughs> Relieved to be out of the spider's web, Krista fluttered quickly through the trees. Flying backwards beside her, Pips played his flute. They took a shortcut through the forest and crossed the creek at Deadwood. Suddenly, the atmosphere changed. The air now smelt heavy with rotting leaves. Pips tucked his flute under his arm and turned around. There's something following us. I know there is, Krista said, looking back over her shoulder as they picked their way through the thickly woven vines. Only your shadow. She took his hand. Pips, do you remember any of the old forest legends? She asked. You mean the stories about goblins and trolls and evil spirits? Come on, Chris. Aren't you a little bit old for fairy legend? But what if those stories are true? She insisted. Pips just laughed at her. Hey, don't get your wings in a twist, he said. There are no evil spirits, you feather brain. They don't exist. I'm serious about this, Pips. There's something weird going on in this forest, and I'm going to get to the bottom of it. 
And I think you've been listening too much frog talk. Word has it that you've been spending so much time with Magi Loon lately, you've gone seedy. Is that so? Then watch this, she said, letting go of his hand and disappearing through the tangle of vines, leaving her a trail of iridescent blue behind her. Just then, the sound of the beetle boys kickstarting their noisy staghorn beetles pierced the quiet of the forest. We've got you covered this time, yelled Stump, their leader. And you're gonna be mulched! Have to catch us first, shouted Pips, streaking after Krista. The race was on. It was a race with absolutely no rules. The beetle boys didn't believe in rules. In fact, they didn't believe in anything outside their noisy beetle world. They were fast-living, fast-flying elves who'd become so attached to their beetles, they'd almost become part of them. No one knew where they came from, but just about everyone agreed they were a dirty, no-good lot who weren't welcome in Fern Gully. Four of them now chased after Krista and Pips as they flew as fast as they could towards Thunderfalls. Pips knew how much the Beetle Boys hated water, so he figured they never followed them up the raging waterfall. Soaring and plummeting, twisting and spiraling, Krista and Pips raced through the forest. The Beetle Boys followed close behind, weaving their way through webs of vines, then streaking along the glassy surface of the creek, narrowly missing low branches and terrifying baby Platts and mother platypus who were enjoying a quiet swim. But no matter how fast and noisy they were, the Beetle Boys were unable to maneuver their beetles to match the dazzling display of speed flying by Krista and Pips. At the foot of the waterfall, Krista shot up through the spray, narrowly missing rocks jutting out from the cliff face. Following her every move, Pips flew beside her. In a final burst of speed, they shot right over the top of the falls. Pips slowed down, but Krista didn't stop. She kept on flying, higher and higher. The Beetle Boys roared to a stop some distance away. With their mouths wide open, they watched Krista head for the canopy. Krista, stop! yelled Pips. She wouldn't do it, would she? shouted Stump. Then, to their horror, Krista disappeared. She completely disobeyed fairy lore and flew straight through the canopy.